Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Post in Black, where we celebrate black excellence. Today, we have a very, very special episode. We are here with editor Lillian E. Benson. Lillian, thank you so much for joining us today on Post in Black. You're welcome. Oh, Good to be is, here. It is awesome to have you. You know, we're, we're going to dive into a lot of things, talk about even how uh, my brother met you and, and found out about you years ago. But we always like to start the show and kind of just walk in and ease into it with a little icebreaker. Is that okay? Sure. Okay, so I have an icebreaker. You've worked on so many great projects. You've done so many great things, had a lot of you know, very, very unique skill sets to the work you've done. What is the bad idea that you've had? What's a bad idea that you ever had? Because you've done so many good things. What's a bad idea that you had that didn't quite work out like you thought it would? That I thought of? Yeah, that you thought of. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm Ooh. sure I'm sure they're there. Yeah. Um, you know, like I, I did something with, I'll give you an example with uh -huh. my brother. I thought it would be cool to reenact, uh, you know, like playing like I was, a, he was the bull and I was the, uh, oh. you know, had the little thing, but I put the, <laughs> I put the pillow in front of a couch and moved it and he hit his head on the couch and split oh, his head open. God. So that's, that's, uh, that's a bad idea that I had that wasn't very wise. Well, I can tell you something that ha I did when I was a little girl. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's not fine. a, not that I can remember offhand mm -hmm. in editing. Well, I had a little, um, washing machine yeah and we didn't have a lot of money mm -hmm. um, but you know so it was a big deal for my mother to buy the washing machine for both of us there were two girls my okay. sister older sister yeah and my friend Stephanie and I decided to and I think I was in the second grade okay decided to wash one of my dresses and we put ink in <laughs> the water oh no what was the purpose for the ink in the water? I think it was like laundry detergent. Oh. And my mother almost. I remember the dress. Mm. It was a beautiful. Unforgettable like, dress. Brown <laughs> dress. It was one of my dress dresses. Okay. Dressy dresses. Yeah. And mine was brown and um, with little um, embroidery here. Yeah. And then we, I think we opened it to let the water out. We put it on the floor. Mm -hmm. Stephanie never came back to my house again. <laughs> I don't know what my mother did to me, but you know, we, that was it. The dress was gone. That was it. That was it. That's a memorable time. That yeah. is, that is something yeah. you remember. When you said dress, washer machine and ink, <laughs> I, my imagination started running. I was like, and where are we going? I suspect it was Stephanie's idea <laughs> to do it. I can't blame her. And I, and it's funny. I remember her name. I don't remember her, mm -hmm. her last name, but we were in the second grade together. Oh man. Oh, well. Those, those elementary days. <laughs> those elementary, you know what? I, I don't know if you don't know this about me, but I used to teach uh, first and second grade. Oh. And so those, those five, yeah. six, seven year olds, you would think, I mean, they're young, yeah. but the creativity and just it, doing yeah. whatever yeah, well, is that's amazing. Something people, well, some people know it, mm -hmm. um, that I taught public school. Yeah, yeah. And I taught art in public school. See. Uh, kindergarten, first and second. Then I taught art in high school. We were right in the same way. Yeah. But that helped me um, understand. I had a teacher's license mm -hmm. and I studied art and um, education in, in college. Wow. And working class girl, mm -hmm. what do you be become? You become a teacher yeah. or a nurse. I right. mean, those were the, maybe an office worker, but mm -hmm. those were the acceptable yeah. uh, um career ideas that were within reach. Yeah. And you grew up in New York, right? In Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah. In Brooklyn. Yeah. And um and I taught in Harlem mm -hmm. and in Brooklyn. Wow. And so it was kind of natural, but I got the uh, filmmaking bug in college. Mm -hmm. And when I met someone when I was um uh, I guess my second year teaching. Right. And so I was in high school then. Um, and she was an editor, documentary editor, mm. and I was walking her dogs with a friend. Her friend was my friend from college, and she needed somebody else to help her do this summer job, yeah. and I, I didn't have a job. So um, so I'm not a dog person. I'm a cat person. Hey, I'm right there with <laughs> you. I like it. <laughs> and she said, if you ever decide to leave teaching, uh, call me. Wow. And fortunately, she meant it. So when I decided this wasn't for me and that I wasn't going to be great at it, mm -hmm. um, I called her and she helped me get my first uh, documentary job. Wow. And it was like, a, you know, an intern. Yeah. Job, apprentice. It was really an internship yeah. job, the free internships. 
We, you, we're jumping right into it yeah. because that <laughs> that that is just you know I, I've we've done a lot of interviews and I think talking to so many different people that how people got started how everyone got started is so different it's so unique mm-hmm. the trajectory mm-hmm. oh this conversation sparked this idea or this thought I watched this film or mm-hmm. I kind of fell into it or I've always knew I wanted yeah. to edit so there's so many different pathways mm-hmm. can can we can we track back a little sure, bit and talk sure. about we know obviously you grew up in Brooklyn and did in obviously the teaching and nursing but what was kind of the catapult to like where did you go to school and how did that all start about I went to art school okay. and I was you know I was always an artist right. and always you know mushing around with paper and paint when I was a kid and um and one of the you know sometimes people say things mm-hmm. to you or your parents that can um adjust the course yeah or correct the course of yeah. your your experiences. And this uh, teacher also from the second grade, the infamous second grade. Second grade, grade is where it's uh, at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we were doing uh, President's Day. Mm-hmm. Of course, that time it was called, you know, Washington's birthday right, yeah, and Lincoln's right, birthday. Right. So it was a combined play. And I did a lot of the artwork for it. Mm-hmm. Um And we had an assembly line. My sister is also an art major. She taught art in the public school for over 30 years. Wow. And so the assembly line was the big pot from like, you know, Mm -hmm. the soup soup I remember that. Yeah, I know know what you're talking about. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know who drew the circles. It was probably my father. And then um, I I, I think it was, in, in, in any case, we needed however many pennies for the class. Yeah. And I had to draw Lincoln and color it in. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Crayola, <laughs> it's all good. The, the One of the best gifts um, that I got as a child mm-hmm. was pastels. Wow. And um, and like people say, the 64 Crayola um, mm-hmm. a box. Those boxes, right. And so yeah. that's like, you know, instead mm-hmm. of eight. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the old <laughs> you know, yeah. that's the that's yeah. the real deal. Heavy so, yeah. And it, so we did it, and in the end, I, we had all these things, and somebody cut it out. And but it was a family affair, and probably my sister helped me color. Mm-hmm. My sister's older. Okay. And um, so the teacher and we did. I did a portrait of um, Martha and George Washington, yeah. but that was in tempera paint. So I had to draw it, and and, and it was big. Mm. And she told my mother that she thought that I should go to art school. Wow. And she recommended um, a, a, a Saturday class. And my parents, being the kind of people that would not do for one mm-hmm. and, and not the other, right? Um, both of us went. Okay. Wow. So we went for a couple of years, I guess about four years or so. And, and you, you take that experience and you go to the art school, but I'm sure art schools, like many, what I've heard from even different friends of going to, you know, Duke Ellington in Washington, D.C. and schools uh-huh. like that, it may, you may go for one thing, but it sparks interest in so many others. Was that kind of similar how you fell into, you know? Obviously well, going yeah. Art, but I mean, I think the, the, I made a film in, in art school. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah. But, but art, that art class, that recognition, that support from my family, mm-hmm. um, it was okay to fool around with art, to mush around and draw and, you know. Yeah, they um, encouraged it. They did not discourage it. I got so, you. Yeah. So, and they bought me the supplies, which, of course, for a working class family is not a small thing. Mm-mm. And I went to a high school with an art specialty. And my sister, because she went there, I got in real easy. Mm. But you had to have a portfolio to get in. Yeah. And, of course, you have to have a portfolio to get into the art school. Right. And then... You kind of see what's there. Right. And it was very traditional uh, tracking at that time. It mm-hmm. was um, um, industrial design, graphic arts, art education, um, painting. Mm. Um, these were the majors. Advertising. Um, this got to be an ar- architecture. Wow. So very famous architecture school as well. Um, so those were the tracks. So of course, I was in art education because mm-hmm. I couldn't just take art, right? Because I had to get a job. Because when I was done with school, I was going to have to work. You got to got to pay the bills. So it was very very <laughs> practical. And yeah. my, you know, I always say my job was to get grades. That was my job. I had a little part time job on mm-hmm. the side, but my job was to get good grades, mm-hmm. to keep the scholarship, to stay in school, to get the degree, to get the job, to support myself. Yeah. 
the little the little things. Yeah. 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 It's like when you're in school initially up front, you're like you're you're doing the things, yeah. you're getting the job, but then like that last that third or fourth year going into junior Ooh. senior, you're like everybody's conversation switches to mm-hmm. what you're doing next. Yeah. How are you gonna do that? And as an artist, you know, even being a theater major, people were like how, how, do you how do you how are you going to pay how bills? Are you gonna pay what are you going to do? You know, it's fun when you're going to play in college, mm-hmm, but now how mm-hmm, are you going to actually mm-hmm, make mm-hmm, money mm-hmm. lucrative? And I have a very practical uh, temperament, mm-hmm. um, which is useful in editing. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> because you got to just put mm-hmm. it together. You got to be practical. You got to you know you people can have the idea, and, and this is something I, I I discovered working with. One director who's very, very gifted, John Else, and we did one documentary together, and he was a consultant mm-hmm. on Eyes on the Prize. And he was, you know, he's a former cinematographer, so right. he's into the film, you know, yeah, texture, and lighting, it, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And he's a very good writer. So he would want to tell me technically what to do. And I, at one point I said, John, just tell me what you want. Yeah. Don't worry about the technical. I'll get the technical for you. And it was just a relief because he wanted to be able to, you know, get whatever was in his head mm-hmm. out. And um, and he trusted me. He didn't have to tell me the 10 steps. He just said, I want to end up in Colorado. He didn't have to tell mm-hmm. me how to drive. How to get there. Yeah, yeah I just no. did where I want to go. Because he already gave me the stuff. Right. I mean, if they don't give you the stuff, that's when you're in trouble. That's different. But I think being practical like that... Um, and a dreamer, but not too much, mm-hmm. um, because I couldn't afford to. Right, I couldn't afford to. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump around a little bit uh-huh, because sometimes okay. you know we 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 go a certain way with posting yeah, black. Yeah. But what intrigued me just now is you talk about eyes on the prize and obviously mm-hmm. what you know winning the award for that, being the first African American woman, being ace, you know, mm-hmm. all of these different things that you accomplished. Starting out from that art school, starting out from your background. And, you know, putting them, you know, even drawing the link in and coloring it in. My mm-hmm. mind thinks about, did you ever think or imagine that you'd be where you are now? Nope. All these years, you know, all the credits. Nope. I believe it's over 80, 80 credits, you know, to to your name. That's incredible. What, how do, what do you, when you think about that and you're still working and still doing it, why, do you, what, what, what sticks out to you most that you reflect upon, you know, during this time? Well, um. Couple things happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, with the pandemic, right? Um, with getting several awards, most importantly, the uh, recent Career Achievement Award from mm-hmm. ACE. Yeah, that they don't give to everybody. No, they don't. Yeah, <laughs> no, they don't. No, they and don't. it really is for a life's work. Mm-hmm. And what I said to a friend, um, um, Daniel may have interviewed him. You may have interviewed him. Uh, Sam Pollard, mm, he, think, said, he congratulated yeah. me. He's a uh, um, director mm-hmm. now. He was in, We were both assistants back in the day. Yeah. And I met Sam when he came to borrow a 35 millimeter splicer from the editor uh, editing room I was working in. And I opened the door and there's a black man. Mm. And I said, oh, hi. <laughs> and I'm sure he said, oh, hi. hi. Yeah, a black man, black <laughs> yeah. woman. What are you, uh, what's going on here? And so I, we, the company lent him the splicer, and that's how we first met. And then we were working, we worked together on Eyes on the Prize. I mm-hmm. was editing, and he was directing, but I wasn't on his team. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, um, he said, belated congratulations on your award. Yeah. And I said thank you. You know, email. That's all we do now. Right. <laughs> I said sometimes you do the work, and people notice. Mm. And I realized that that was really a key to my personality. Sometimes these things just slip out. Um, you do the work. You can't count on what anybody else is going to see. You do the work. You show up. Yeah. You develop a reputation. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you get rewarded. Wow. And there's no guarantee. And th- and I think that's a good thing for people to know because we we interview mm-hmm. people at various points in their careers mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who are just starting out and have mm-hmm. all this aspiration to mm-hmm. you know or mm-hmm. inspired to do so many <clears throat> things, and and your name may come up or does come up you know mm-hmm. Taryn Tropshot her name comes up as mm-hmm. people they look to is like wow I want to mm-hmm. get there but you know kind of what I'm getting is you don't you can't control 
the mm, end. You just control no. where you are. You control you. Okay. You control you. Yeah. And if you don't get the opportunity, um, you can't shine. Mm. And if somebody doesn't want to shine the light on you mm -hmm. or acknowledge you, which happens. Yeah. Um, you can't make them say when they're up on the stage at Sundance. Oh, they right. me yeah. mention their editor. You can't make them say that. You can't yeah. make the feature director mention their editor. Right. And That's, it's the most important part because every, sometimes, everybody. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah some, but you, you know, coming in and I think Dino knows and the people that listen and watch all the time. I came into the industry. I still am primarily an actor. Mm -hmm. So on front in front of the camera. But I was going to a lot of the sessions with my brother early on. Mm -hmm. I saw how much work was being done. And I mm -hmm. said, oh, yeah, acting. We, we have an important part to play. But without the right editor who understands story, understands putting things together. We, you know, we had an interview with um, uh, James Wilcox and he just talked mm -hmm. about his film 13 Lives that he cut mm -hmm. in the amount of hours. Right. That is a skill. It's also a gift. Yes. And you it's also, both. you know what I mean? You have to have both mm -hmm. in time together to be able to do mm -hmm. something like this. And, and you have to have a little luck. Yeah. Somebody told me that 25 years ago, probably. Mm. And I didn't believe him. Wow. And he was not a guy in the industry. Wow. He was a businessman. He said, you know what they don't talk about? Um, and this was at a social gathering. Mm -hmm. um, I probably could figure out the, I know what film I was on. Um, but um, he said, people don't say that it's luck, um, that you need luck. And I think sometimes you do. Mm -hmm. But also sometimes pe people are willing to do things that you're not going to do. Yeah. Can, can you talk about what that is? One of the most important things in your life is knowing who you are. And it sounds simplistic. Mm -hmm. um, the real you. Mm. The, um, the, the real you. No, I'm not. And, and, and yeah. you know. I've been black a long time. I said that to my assistant today. I've been black a long time. Yeah. I'm, you know, fair. Mm -hmm. um, I have freckles mm -hmm. from, you know, right. fill in the blank. Right. It's not some man who married my great great grandmother. Right. Um, I can't change that. Mm -hmm. I can ch temper my personality. Mm -hmm. I can temper, um, I can protect what I say. Uh, to other people and right. be, you know, careful and professional. Right. Um, I don't know what they're going to think of me. Mm. I don't know what I'll trigger. Wow. I can't, I can't do anything about that. Some people like to work with men. Yeah. I could name a lot of them. Yeah. Some people like to work with women. There are fewer of them. Yeah. Um, what, what are some things that, you know, and I guess like we're talking about everything. Mm -hmm. What are some things that you've noticed that may have changed that are different from when you started to like what's going on now, you know, in the industry? Because obviously we've had great, great guests on our show. And I, I love shouting them out. Daisha Broadway, uh, Stephanie Philo, yeah, you know, yeah, Taylor Mason. Yeah. And they're winning, you know, yeah. Emmys for Black Lady Sketch Show and the things they're doing. But there seems to be more opportunity and kind of a push that you can speak to maybe was that there when you started the industry? That wasn't there. Yeah. That wasn't there. Yeah. That, now how I, was I that? I mean, well, let, let's say one thing. Um, I love American cinema editors. Mm -hmm. I was very proud to be their first African-American woman. Right. And their first woman of color. That's how they describe me. Mm. Um, because not only I was the first African-American, I was the first woman of color. Mm. Um, Ace started in 1950. Mm-hmm. Um, they had their first person of color, uh, John So, and somewhere in the 70s, uh, John Carter, um, African American legend, yeah, 77. Um, Leon Ortiz Gill, first Latino, mm -hmm. uh, also in the 70s. I don't know his date. He was after John, so maybe he was 78 or 79. Yeah. Leon's still working. Leon works for on um, Law and Order SVU, mm -hmm. and he's a colleague of mine yeah. and friend. And you know, he can tell you what to do <laughs> when you got a difficult director, <laughs> yeah, yeah. which is which is a good thing to have. Right. And so, in 1991, 
41 years after the first person, after the establishment of the organization, comes the little woman of color. Mm. I don't know how many years went before the second woman of color came, who was Maisie Hoy. Mm. Joy Luck Club, the player, she does, um, she's doing the recent um, um, uh, Tyler Perry film mm-hmm. for Netflix. Um, yeah, Jasmine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, she's done, um, and that's as different, oh, and Love Jones. Mm. Love Jones, yeah. let's not forget Love Jones. Iconic, yeah. So she's <laughs> the first Asian female, but the second woman, somewhere also in the 90s. So Stephanie and all those who come recently mm-hmm. when there's more um, encouragement. I mean, I know them. I don't know them. Right, know no, them. I know what you mean. Yeah. But, um, and what happens is as people who are coming up become executives, mm-hmm. um, Black Lady Sketch Show, I believe the woman is, um, is it Natasha? Right, right. Natasha, um, oh, behind the scenes, um, um, and I can't. I should know her name. Her name. Yeah. Uh, I know her mother, Romel Foster Owens. So it's Natasha Owens. There we go. Natasha is, and yeah. I've worked for Romel. Wow. So Natasha uh, Romel's daughter is hiring Stephanie. Wow. So that's sometimes you know the change is slow, mm-hmm. and um, and sometimes there's um. Two steps forward and three steps back. Yeah. And you can't, you know, you have no control over that. So you have to be happy in yourself, happy with the work, try to work with people who are decent. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I've been lucky Mm -hmm. with um, having some people who were really, really instrumental um, in shepherding me through. And and that was one thing that the pandemic with the self-reflection brought out. Um, the first person who helped me, and I hope I don't forget anybody, is Pat Powell, okay. who is the person whose dogs I walked. Uh, the next person was Joe Staten, mm-hmm. who got me into the union, um, he, African-American man. Jackie Shearer, mm-hmm. black woman, hired me for Eyes on the Prize. John Else, the one who's, I had to tell, uh, don't yeah. worry, I can, I'll, I'll just help you. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a white man. Uh, Debbie Allen, who believed in me mm-hmm. to do fiction when nobody else did. So that's the short list. And of course, that would bring you to 2000. Yeah. And then after that, um, other people have helped me. That I helps. work with Arthur Fournay now at yeah. um, Wolf Films. And, you know, he's an African American executive in charge of Post. So he runs nine, sh- nine series for Wolf. Incredible, yeah. And, and I'm there's there's a lot of things I could ask, mm-hmm. but one of the things I think that I'm intrigued by is because mm-hmm. I'm inspired by people who are in front of you, people who are on your mm-hmm. level, and people who are coming behind you. Yeah. What's a piece of advice or something that stood out to you from somebody that they gave to you during all these, you know, these these seasons? Well, different people give you different things. Okay. Um, and and some of it is their own experience. I have done documentary and mm-hmm. fiction. Yeah. Very impactful stories too, by the way. And I'll get to that if, if yeah. it's a choice. So, I mean, they're too, very, different. Yeah, very different. Very different, yeah. But but documentaries help the the qualities that I have mm-hmm. that help me with documentaries is a kind of um, attention to detail, yeah. uh, an absolute um, allegiance to the truth, mm-hmm. which came from my family. Mm-hmm. It didn't come from anywhere else. Came from my family, um, so I was. It was easy for me to say, "Okay, well, what happened, and what's the truth, that's, and who said what?" And right. so I could yeah. be. Um, that's not always a quality people mm. want, even though they're doing a documentary. Right. Some people do, um, and but but so that's a different quality than the storytelling that's involved with fiction, right. which is you know pretty much what you're saying. Mm-hmm. You're the actor. You need us. Right. We make you look good. Amazing. <laughs> and I said in a screening not so long ago, I said, I know my job is making him look good. Come on. And I said it just like that <laughs> um, because I knew 
I didn't want to use that certain angle with the particular actor. Yeah. He doesn't look as good. Yeah. I said, I know he's supposed to be looking fine. <laughs> and, you know, so she laughed. My producer laughed because she's younger and a female. So yeah. she, but she, you know, I can joke with her. Right, right. But, you know, I've also been there for mm. a while. Um, but those those qualities are, are, but the truth can trans. Uh, the truth is real currency that can go from genre to genre mm. to genre. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have people ask you to leave your values at the door. And wow. those are the people that don't hire me because mm. they see in the interview that you're not going to, that I'm not that. Yeah. You're not and I don't even line. know how I tell them. It's just, I think it's, it's in an embodiment of who you are. Yeah. You know, they, you know, you, they say real recognize real. And as yeah, you get yeah. older, yeah, you yeah. kind of know who you can play with mm -hmm, or you mm -hmm, can't. Yeah. And it's unspoken, but sometimes yeah. it's, you know, you don't need words to say. No, no. And and you you just feel, you know, that's one of the um uh things you can't measure. Mm -hmm. But back to what what yeah, what advice, I started yeah. with with the documentarian, she said, and I did not believe her. Mm. She said, Well, you know. The film tells you who it is. You can't make it be something that it's not. And I thought, what? What kind of crazy talk is that? <laughs> I was 24. Yeah. You know what? You can't make the film be something that it's not. Mm. And another director said, <clears throat> you can't, um, you don't go, you don't come back. Mm -hmm. Another director said, you don't come back with a story unless you went out to get that story. Mm. It doesn't just happen. Wow. You go out, if I'm going to do a portrait of the actor through the years, right? I better talk to, through the years being the operative thing, mm -hmm. I need to have something on every time, on the timeline. Go line. back to second grade. That's correct. Go back to second grade. <laughs> go and, back to and, second and, grade. But I can't, it doesn't just happen. Right. And nothing is, um, editing is very, very calculated. Mm -hmm. And it's also very emotional. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of an odd thing. Yeah. Because you got to just give yourself to things sometimes. And I, I can't say that about fiction because I haven't worked on that kind of programming right. yet. But in documentaries, you got to just like open up. Open up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and, and it's okay. Yeah. And um but anyway, so that's 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 one thing somebody said to me and um somebody else said um and these are both women. Mm -hmm. You can you you belong any place you are. Mm. Which was profound because I was on I was both of these I was pretty young. Um John Carter once said to me, um, when do you think it's safe on a job, Lillian? When do you think you're not going to be uh, let go? Mm. I said, well, after rough cut. <laughs> and he said, you're never safe. Ooh. They can always let you go. Mm. And I thought, Ooh. Ooh. And that was probably because it had happened to him. Yeah. And I was in my 30s then. Uh, but that he was specifically talking about fiction. Um, you don't know that until you go big, through it, though. Big films, yeah. You know, big films, not you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, movies of the week that air on you know some yeah, odd so, channel, right, right, yeah. you know. So, um, but also we all do um, things that are not glamorous. Um, at, Putting together the list of all the credits for the recent ACE Award mm -hmm. was actually traumatic. Really? Which is interesting. I didn't expect it. I mean, not traumatic, not like, you know. But no, I know what you mean. But it just was like, what, you, what you're not expecting it to be. Um, I went back. Mm, I see. I went back in time. And I forgot one credit. And they had already made up the list. Every couple of days I said, I forgot this credit. Mm. And the one credit that um, I forgot was a, really a good one. It was an assistance credit. It was on the U2 film, uh, feature film, Rattle and Hum. And I was the nighttime assistant 
one of two nighttime assistants singing yeah. dailies for yeah. Bono and company. Yeah. So I got to look at them singing many, many times. So it was cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I told the executive, I apologized. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm sorry, I forgot this. I said, I know, I hope it's not set to type yet. She said, no, 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 we can change it. I said, it was, it was a traumatic memory because I had just been passed over for a promotion uh, to junior editor on a feature. And I got this nighttime job that was union and paid, you know, very good money. Mm-hmm. And it just got me through the period till I could decide what I was going to do. Wow. So. Wow. So, the, but, but again, you know, it's, you think about, it's a lot of shows. It's, it's a lot of shows. <laughs> and not it's, all of them are great. <laughs> no, no, that's the thing. That's the thing. And. I, I, there's so much to talk to you about. It's, it's like I'm learning so much, and obviously we, we we have to do a part two or have something with you. But I think one of the things I want to ask last is with all the all the credits you're talking about from feeling even butterflies with doing the credits for Ace and and the project. We talked about the advice that was given to you. Mm-hmm. There's so many people that are watching this show and they're getting into it and they're needing mm-hmm. that encouragement to try to continue, you know, you talked about being, you know, I've always been black, you know, you've always been, I can't help it either. My mother, my mother is your complexion as well. Mm -hmm. And so we, we deal with it on every level. It doesn't matter. What's, what's a piece of advice or encouragement that you can give to this next wave, the next generation people who are getting in the business and and providing post-production with a spotlight that wasn't really there before? Well, one of the important things for me personally is that I've always said, I want to look back Mm -hmm. and see somebody behind me. Mm. And that is now happening. And it's happening in many genres. It's still infinitesimal. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not for the faint of heart, editing. Um, It's also um, anybody can do it. Yeah. Anybody can do it. it. But it's not easy. Mm. If you have a kind of temperament and skill set, you can do it. Um, I think you have to be true to yourself. Yeah. I mean, that's the most, it it's always sounds corny, but in, in the end, you are sitting at that desk mm-hmm. by yourself. You go home, you drive your car, you hug your children. Mm-hmm. You have to be the person you are. And abuse is not part of, of what you should put up with to make it in this game. Mm. And people will will act bad in bad ways. Mm-hmm. Um, I think people need to hear that too because sometimes I think what's accepted is, uh, oh, Hollywood, that's that's just part that, of it. Well, it's, you, it, it happens, but it doesn't. Yeah, it, it, you don't it, have to put up you with don't it. Have to, it's what you can take. There's no reason for us to beat our children. Mm-hmm. There's no reason for us to beat our spouses. Mm-hmm. There's no reason for us to walk down the street and just jump somebody. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason for your boss to jump you. Mm -hmm. And I told a guy, um, and he was a a producer at uh, one of the studios, and uh, he's left now. It's a long time ago. And I was new out here, and a friend introduced me to him. He thought maybe he could help me. He was a, mm-hmm. a black man who had been a musician, and then he went on, went to law school and just teaching law. And I something had happened. I don't remember what it was. I said, you know, it felt like I was jumped. Mm. And he said, jumped. I said, you know, jumped. Like you coming home, and they jump you. Hmm. And he said, yeah, the business can be that way sometimes. Mm. And it was true. It was whatever. It, I don't, but it was not a, it was such a visceral feeling that even though the person hadn't laid a hand on me, you still felt I it. knew psychically mm-hmm. that they wanted to destroy me. Mm. And we can't help if we trigger that in people. It's not acceptable. And one of my colleagues, um, Jacques, says, um, cause you know, the ACE has a mentoring program yeah, and, um, uh, and we all, you know, try to help everybody who's part of the underserved, uh, communities. He said the business can be bad cause mm-hmm. he's, can, he's a little more positive than I can yeah. be some days. He said, you know, the business can be bad. He, he said, but there's good people out there, but you, you gotta look for them and work for them. So that's probably the most concise advice is, 
while there's bad stuff out there, there are good people. Look for the good. Look for the good people. Work for them. Don't work for the crazies. Don't work for the crazies. Uh, there's nothing else to say to that. <laughs> That we can't. We're not going to top that. That's 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 real. And I think mm-hmm. I appreciate and I appreciate this time. I mean, I know there's so much to cover. We try yeah. to cover as much as possible. But mm-hmm. I was really impacted by everything you said. I just want to thank you again on You're behalf welcome. of my brother, Daniel, and Posting Black. We thank you for joining us. And, uh, and to close it out, we just want to thank all of you for tuning in and listening to another episode, listening to another episode of Posting Black. Be sure to follow us on all of our uh, social media platforms and make sure you tap that subscribe button and listen to us on Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcast. Until next time, we thank you for tuning in. See you next time on Posting Black.